Hi, so I'm Rebecca Rahmani. I'm the CEO of Gangly Sister. I'm here in London, and I'm here with Galinda, and she's going to introduce herself. Hi, uh, thanks, Rahmani. Um, I'm Galinda. I'm the CEO of Kosu, and it's a, essentially the coolest everything you'll ever see. It's a mobile learning platform which enables anyone anywhere in the world to be able to create their own interactive learning experiences. What kinds of changes direction have you had with this startup? So, you know, initially I started out um, and I decided I wanted to do something mobile. Uh, so it was actually 15th of December 2008, iPhone came out, knew it was a game changer. The biggest risk was actually the development side, so I taught myself how to program over the Christmas break. But well, so you just taught yourself how to program over well, Christmas break? Yeah, so there was only two books to program, how to program the iPhone at that stage. So one I couldn't understand, it was too geeky. The other one, I did pages one to 400 every exercise, and then the first app came out mid-February 2009. So I did the whole lot, the development, the coding, the questions. Um, so when that actually got onto the mobile device, I was in such a high. That, you know, it's amazing. The first app and it's live on a device, it's like, wow. Um, I haven't had a high like that for years since. And <laughs> But it was out there doing um, educational apps, becoming the publisher and the developer, and after the first year already, the, the, the industry was changing. You couldn't make money on the app stores anymore. Wow, okay. And how do you deal with those changes? I mean, do you see them coming, or does it usually happen after the crisis, or how does that work? Uh, I would, you always, nothing ever happens by surprise, <laughs> usually. Really? Um, in the sense that, okay, there's, there's luck, there's opportunity comes. Um, but you know, the things like that, you see it coming a long way off. You, you usually about six months. You start getting feedback on that type of thing. So you know, you know, because you resulted from all the feedback we were getting. And so you usually, I would say, when you do those type of changes, you go about six months. Um, I think it's about whether you actually recognize it early enough. But the, the early signs are usually there. Are there particular people you're listening to? Is it just your customers? Are there particular uh, like publications that you look to or mentors that you look to that are ahead of the trend usually? No, I always say if you're going to go and look at a new country or something, walk the streets. Picking if you're doing a proper job, go and walk to work, go and walk the streets, walk through the marketplace, and you get the vibe of what's happening. If people are re ready for it, and that's talking to the ordinary people and talk just talking to different people, and you start to see patterns arising. So would it be fair to say that even the failure was fun and worth doing? Oh yeah, I mean you learn a lot. Um, I know that probably the only thing I regret then is not having had more time. Because at some point, you know, you have to put uh, full conviction behind a startup. And you know, I was still holding down my investment banking job, trying to do this you know, after hours. You wanted to tell me about uh, the worst advice that you ever got. And they always say when you know, when you're doing an MBA, there's three things you can change in your career. There's the function, the industry, and the geography. And you should never change all three at once. Uh, well, I've actually never followed that, <laughs> and I tend to change all three at once in my life. And yes, it is a bit more challenging, uh, but who says no to a big challenge? So what, how do you assess what advice is good advice and bad advice? I mean, we all get lots of advice. How do you, what filters are you using? I think when asking about uh, asking for advice, it's always good to ask multiple people, um, and then you do a form of triangulation. Um, so you, you take different advice, and then there would be that that core bit, which is common to all that advice. And at that point, you just look at it and say, well, should I follow it? Shouldn't I follow it? And sometimes you think, okay, that's the, the safe way. Um, and sometimes you just decide not to do it. So you know, starting out. You know, if you talk to so many people, they'll say, oh, don't give up your corporate career, etc. And at some point, you just say, you know what, do it. Uh, but my view is you always have backup plans or backup plans or backup plans. So if it fails, then you know, there's a fallback plan so you can do something else. Wow. Okay, so we're um, giving, pretending to give you a virtual gift. And okay. what, yeah. <laughs> so what if I gave you an extra hour today, what would you do? Well, it's just like a, a gift. But, I mean, it's either sleep or keep going with my to-do list and my email inbox. <laughs> or, um, because of where I live, uh, probably get a uh, can of paint and go out and paint my neighbor's metal railings, which I'm slowly doing to meet my neighbors. Painting your neighbor's metal railings. railings. Yes. 
So okay. I, I live. What color? <laughs> oh, I'm painting just black, so I don't oh, okay. cause too much of an issue. Okay. Yeah, but mine are blue. So.